There are plenty of risks to consider when buying a used car. What did the previous owner do with it? How reliable will it be? How much is it gonna cost to insure? Ooh. Buying a used sports car is a lot like sticking your hand into a box of mouse traps. The previous owner probably drove the doors off the thing, and unless you know how to spot that trouble, you might not even know that your car is a ticking time bomb. So to save you that trouble, your boy Brad Danger here is gonna run you through five cars that you should avoid like the plague. And the last car on this list is so bad. Not even a four leaf clover could bring good luck to how atrocious its reliability is. It's great to see you guys again. Let's go. The Audi S4 seems like an amazing deal to the untrained eye. Beautiful bodywork, quattro all-wheel drive, killer luxury interior, all powered by a high revving, naturally aspirated 4.2 liter V8, which sadly, we don't have much of those anymore. And it's all the right ingredients you need to have an absolute blast bombing down the Audubon, going from zero to 60 miles per hour in an exhilarating 5.3 seconds. Brand new, this car was worth about 50,000 bucks. Yet just after a few years, depreciation has hit this thing like a truck, dropping its value to less than 10,000 bucks. Yeah, getting a sporty German car from a reputable brand for an eighth of the price new sounds way too good to be true. And well, that's because it is. The B6 variant of the Audi S4 is definitely the one to avoid. Spanning roughly from 2003 to 2005, the B6 was the first major overhaul to the beloved B5, which also had that utterly unreliable bi-turbo 2.7 liter V6, which was a nightmare to work on as well, but it did put down the power. And the V8 in the B6 followed in its older brother's footsteps because it is downright unreliable and has a reputation of just blowing up randomly. With the timing belt in the back of the engine close to the firewall, the only way to fix these bad boys is to pull the entire engine, which can be an extremely expensive seven to $8,000 job at the dealership, or should I say dealership. Seriously, Audi did not do enough R&D on this V8 because I don't know what they were thinking. And the fact that the unreliable part, if that doesn't bankrupt you, well then the bigger issue is gonna be insurance costs. Because having looked myself, they're not that cheap to insure. And since the car's age is only increasing, the likelihood of finding a good low mileage example is pretty much slim to none these days. I mean, let's face it guys, people nowadays don't really take maintenance into consideration. And unless you're buying a car from somebody that religiously changed their oil every 3000 miles, then any B6 S4 is really not worth all that much. Yeah, it pains me to say this, but you're seriously better off with a CPO Audi A3, which believe it or not, has a much more reliable engine and with way more tunability at the same price. The Dodge Challenger is the quintessential poster car for your average high schooler. And the two-door aggressive Mopar can easily be found for around 15 to $20,000 used. However, buyer beware. The muscle heads who buy these new usually beat the hell out of them, but who can blame them? I highly recommend that you don't be the second or third owner of this vehicle at all costs. Whether you choose a V6 or V8 variant, they're both pretty powerful and come with strictly rear wheel drive, which means these babies have probably seen more donuts than a cop car. And due to its Chrysler roots, they're not very reliable. And that's before they got abused. There are several, several documented complaints about the automatic transmission getting stuck in first gear. And not only that, but there's a ton of reports about loud clunky sounds when shifting gears and a super heavy clutch with the manuals. And another problem is the hissing groaning sound that comes from the steering wheel at low speeds, which sounds, uh... Yeah, nothing that you'd wanna hear out of a poster sports car. Now, there is one thing. The repair cost for the Chrysler is definitely a lot less than the Audi. But just remember, they're gonna be frequent, so they're gonna add up over time. And again, insurance is gonna be expensive because, well, there's two doors, a huge engine, and a high likelihood that at some point something might not go right. Boom! Or 
go wrong. So if you live in a place where it's not sunny 365 days of the year, you're gonna have to worry about that oversteer in any bad conditions. And that can be bad whether you lift off the gas too quick or not quick enough. And let's just say that wouldn't be very ideal. Now, what is ideal though, is if you wanna save the manuals, well, there's an easy way to do that, and that is to click the link up here because we got this shirt. Go check it out up there. It is killer and it's limited edition and it's the best shirt that we've ever made. Go snag one. The BMW E6 EM5 has a seriously beast 500 horsepower V10 engine in a sedan. And this Bavarian rocket has the same engine as a Lamborghini for just 15,000 bucks used. And headphone users, get ready, because it sounds like this. The precise handling makes this car super fun to whip around. And when you pull up to pretty much any car at a red light and you give them that look, you can send pretty much any single one of them to a date at Gapplebee's. The whole reason you wanna buy one of these M5s is for that dreamy engine, which unfortunately is an unreliable nightmare. Rod bearings are the culprit, and when they fail, it hits the fan. Yeah, like catastrophic failure, because the entire engine grenades and sends shrapnel into the Vano system, which will then subsequently Thanos snap your life savings away. This isn't just some rare issue. This is a problem that affects almost every E60 M5, even the low mileage ones. And replacing an engine in one of these starts at around 35 to 40,000 bucks. Double the price you'd pay to just get into the car. And before we get on to how awful the automatic transmission is in this thing, I don't even wanna get started on the throttle control actuator. So let's just move on to that awful and dreadful SMG transmission. Because yes, this thing likes to grenade itself frequently. And when you're in the cockpit, the, well, very dated iDrive infotainment system is so frustrating to use that you're just not even gonna wanna turn it on. And seriously, this might be the most expensive BMW to keep on the road ever. i definitely stay away from this German financial nightmare and save your money and still make loads of horsepower by checking out one of the cars in this ideal list. Okay, and now it's time for the ideal question of the day, which is what is the worst car that you've ever, ever been in or driven? Let us know down in the comments and your experience. I wanna go through and read all of these comments. I cannot wait, let's go. From one cursed car from Germany to another, the R230 Mercedes SL600 is a two-door coupe carrying an insane six liter V12 which makes an astronomical 604 horsepower. And that power, baby, is gonna glue your head to the back of your headrest. And while it does that, it's gonna play you the most magnificent sounds you've ever heard. Sure, this car looks mean and sounds like a dream. And you don't have to look that hard to find these for under 10K all day long, which on paper makes this thing sound pretty phenomenal. But it's anything but a good idea in reality. Because if you buy one of these, be ready to learn that owning a Mercedes means repairs just don't come cheap. It's got a bigger engine than the previously mentioned BMW M5. And that means one thing, bigger breakdowns, and bigger repair bills. The engine's ABC lines frequently leak and cost about $3,000 to replace each time. And they like to fail a lot. So just be ready to spend quite a bit of money over the life of your ownership with this car. Additionally, now that these cars are older, suspension hoses fail, causing a bumpy ride to say the least. The SL600 comes loaded with a ton of luxury amenities, even a car phone. Hello? Yes? Oh, hey, Joe, what, what's up? All those fancy electronic bits, they fail year after year, and well, I'm gonna have to spend the rest of my life savings to keep the HVAC system from failing again? This sucks. While it may look tempting to pilot a V12 German luxury liner, let's just say nine, and do not buy one of these cars. Being the newest car on this list, it may come as a surprise to some, but anyone familiar with Alpha, 
Well, they know it's not a surprise at all. The huge depreciation of the Julia in just the first couple of years makes it seem like an appealing choice. You can pick up one used for around 23,000 bucks with under 50K on the clock. That's insane when you consider that this is Italy's super sedan. And you're gonna have to choose which of the two trim models you wanna get. One is the base model with the two liter inline four with 276 healthy horses. Or the Quadrifolio, which has an exhilarating twin turbo V6 pushing out 500 horses. Smash the pedal to the metal and zero to 60 comes in just 3.9 seconds. which that is definitely good enough to be the fastest car on this list. But the only thing faster than that is how fast this thing's gonna go to your local dealership for repairs. The Julia is filled with problems right from the factory. Cheap materials coupled with terrible assembly standards and shoddy electronics are a recipe for unscheduled visits to the mechanic. And those pesky check engine lights that you just can't shake all come standard with the Julia. One common issue is the electronic throttle control, which will light up the check engine light, sending you right to the dealership to empty your wallet. And even after you get it fixed, the error can pop up every 10,000 miles or so. Alpha's poor craftsmanship and regular maintenance woes will put your car in the grave along with all the money in your wallet if you end up buying this Italian nightmare. Does the word Julia mean regret in Italian? So there you have it. Avoid these cars at all costs to save yourself years of torture. Unless you're into that sort of thing, you weirdo. And hey, if you liked this video, please smash the subscribe button. Also smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're a longtime supporter, check out that join button down there. That thing is awesome. And thank you for the people that have already joined the community. Feel free to go check out some of the other videos on the Ideal channel. And as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.